Well, Slanchan, how do you do, Buckaroos? Uh, welcome back. Uh, part two of Martini Sunday. Uh, and I wanted to, so I did two classics, do classic dirty with the first video. And today I just wanted to take a, a, just a little creativity. Typically, typically uh, martinis them with, with uh, traditionally gin or vodka, but any clear liquor would work. And, and as I say that, I realized one of my videos earlier, uh, I, I used a barrel gin. So uh, you can, you can do a martini with anything really. So, uh, oh, Almost two months ago now, my wife and I were out of town, so I didn't have the ability to make my own mixers like I, I typically do. So she wanted to try this. So we picked up the Stirrings Simple Lemon Drop Cocktail Mix. So I used that with a product that we picked up in Oklahoma as well from Hocha Town Distilling. Stilling. This is their 100 proof corn whiskey, genuine American corn whiskey. Fermented, distilled, and bottled by Hocha Town Distilling, Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Let me show you that bottle there. So, uh, again, keeping with tradition, uh, it's a two-ounce drink. Two ounces of the liquor, I should say. Two ounces of the liquor, one ounce of the mix, and then a nice, simple lemon peel garnish. And that does help with the aromatics as well. I will show you my second one. Decided to use a product out of Kansas City. This is their version of Pachin at 115 proof. So what I did with this is I did an Irish mint martini. So I've got two ounces of this product. I've got a half ounce of my homemade mint simple syrup using fresh mint and raw sugar. And then, of course, a fresh mint garnish. And boy, doesn't that look nice. I got them both chilled and poured already because I need to take some pictures. So I don't want to waste any time getting to both of them. But I'm going to start with the lemon drop. That's nice. Uh, it, it calls for using a little bit more. Uh, of of the, uh, the the mix, uh, especially when I'm using a, a hundred proof whiskey. Vanessa, how are you? I want to post your comment. Salancha, thanks for tuning in. But I like a strong drink, so for Martini Sunday, we wanted to go big, especially for the last two here. It's just a reminder that you can do anything with a martini, right? It's just a simple cocktail. It doesn't necessarily have to be gin or vodka. You don't necessarily need dry vermouth. Uh, I do have some on hand, but I didn't need it for either of these two. Don't be afraid to get creative because none of these cocktail recipes were handed down from God to Moses on stone tablets. And no matter what anybody tells you, you can do whatever you want. My wife doesn't drink much uh, at all, really, but uh, she used a little bit of this lemon drop mix. Of course, uh, I make her drinks quite a bit weaker than mine. I think they're more of a half ounce liquor for her. <laughs> uh, she hasn't been at it quite as long as I have, though. Uh, oh, man. The lemon, adding the lemon peels nice. You can do whatever garnish you want. I just happen to have some fresh lemons, and I like to keep my garnish simple. A lot of folks like to complicate the hell out of it. You can do a twist. You can do whatever you want. But I like that thin slice of lemon peel there. That really adds to the aromatics as well. And that's all part of the drink. Now, you do want this cocktail well chilled. I did have, I, I did chill the glasses beforehand as well. And again, it's a drink that's served straight up, uh, which means it is chilled, but not served with any ice. A lot of folks use the, use the term straight up when they actually mean neat.
to get my lemon peel out of the way anyway. Anyway, cilantro. As always, any questions or comments, please put it up there as we work through cocktail number one. A friend just informed me a few minutes ago that it is National Cocktail Day. So I will do an official video for National Cocktail Day probably about 6.37, something like that. Wait a little bit after these two. Then I'll come up with something really good for National Cocktail Day. <sighs> I had an idea for a simple syrup I want to put together, but I don't want to give it away right now. Because I'm not sure if I've got all the ingredients to do what I want to do. Because <sighs> I just didn't want to get out today to go to the store. <laughs> I have the ability to go somewhere and visit, but I just wanted to stay home. It's not terribly cold out there, but it isn't warm either. <laughs> so I decided to stay in my pajamas, uh, pajamas all day and just stay comfy. Mm. Some may want this cocktail a little sweeter, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's how you like it. I, I, I tend to like not as sweet, so I always use a little bit less sugar than most recipes call for. But it's nice. Nice color, too. Nice, it's a nice spring cocktail. Nice spring martini, if you will. I bought a couple products from Hochi Town, that corn whiskey and a single barrel cast straight bourbon. And man, it is insanely good. I got to tell you, this stuff is crazy. I really want to visit that distillery at some point. They are really good, man. They're doing some insane product. Anyway. We'll get through that so I can get to cocktail number two because I don't want to warm up too much on me. <laughs> you don't necessarily need it to stay ice cold, but a, a chill is nice. Padraig's Rebellion, Pachin, all malted barley spirits, 100% malted barley, triple distilled, copper pot still at 115 proof. It is unaged. That's what makes it rather special, man. So again, I used two ounces of the product, a uh, half ounce of my homemade simple syrup that I use equal parts water sugar, but I use raw sugar, uh, fresh mint. I did add a couple dashes of mint bitters to the syrup just to give it that light green color. I'm not sure if it translates to the deal or not. I can see it here, but I'm not sure how much you can tell there. Hello. Oh. Fresh mint sprig for a garnish, as you can see. My mint was starting to get wilty, but that whiskey brought it back to life. You see that? <laughs> Apparently, the mint likes the whiskey, man, because it just perked right up and turned bright green as soon as I dropped it in there. <laughs> anyway, anyways, lunch. Oh, that's good. And again, I, I've I've used aged liquors to make a version of a martini. You can use whatever you want, um, but you you know you tend to stay with the the, the clear liquors. Everybody thinks gin or, or or vodka, but I love using moonshine like or, or unaged whiskey products. And this the the corn whiskey for one, and then the hundred percent malted barley in the other. Uh man, that's good. Came up with a couple cocktails uh, for my work this uh, season, St. Patrick's season, if you will, for St. Patrick's Day. I, uh, my boss has named it Meant to be Lucky, but it is basically uh, the Irish whiskey. 
mint simple syrup, uh, Irish cream, and mint bitters. And then I also did a mint uh, or, or did an Irish mint old fashioned. I called it an Irish spring. And it was more or less the same drink. Just took out the uh, took out the Irish cream, basically. But we had a nice spring day to to do it. So we're just kind of we're just getting into uh, having some liquor there. So we're trying to develop some products, and I've been kind of looking at some different things, and I've been having a, a lot of fun just experimenting here at home, and then bringing it to to work to see what they think about it. That's kind of what I want to do in just a few minutes. I meant to make it earlier, but I forgot. Uh, got an idea for a simple syrup. I don't want to spill the beans yet till I know that I can pull it off. I know I don't have the bitters here that I want, so I'm going to have to improvise on the bitters. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that Pacino is just remarkably easy to drink at 115 proof. Both products were. And again, you can, the uh, proportions are really up to you and how you like a particular cocktail. I typically make all martinis a two ounce pour, then add whatever else needs to go. Of course, I make almost all my cocktails a minimum of a two ounce pour, some a little higher. So it, it just kind of depends, man. Again, sometimes the garnishes for color. In this case, it, it is, but it also, again, like, like the lemon peel, helps for the aromatics as well. And I like to keep the garnish simple. Some like to complicate the hell out of it. I, I don't. I like to keep everything simple as possible. You want to make it look good and, and again, help with the, the the aromatics if you can, but you don't need to go crazy. It doesn't need to be elaborate. Having said that, just be true to who you are. If you're one of those folks that go crazy, go crazy, man. Do the garnish any way you want. It was what I was getting at. Hey, I'm a, I'm a simple guy, so I like to keep everything as simple as possible. But the point is, a lot of folks think a garnish needs to be complicated, and it doesn't. So if that's not who you are, don't make it complicated. Oh, man, that's delicious. Do you like that mint simple syrup? I think I made too much. <laughs> but that's a, that's a problem for another day. Uh, oh, mercy. Gosh, that is good, though. That little bit of mint just brightens that pachin right up. That 100% malted barley, even unaged, is a little chewy. Gosh, it's just delicious, though. I thought if I bought two bottles and I drank one within the first couple months, and I saved this to get closer to St. Patrick's Day, but at one point I thought about trying to age it myself. I said, no, nah, it's so good as it is. I just left it alone. But if I get back there to get a couple more bottles, I probably will try to age one on some, some barrel chips. There's a little bit of oak on that hundred percent malted barley. It's going to be delicious. So, I mean, cause they're single malt whiskeys are insanely good. That use a hundred percent malted barley. Anyways, I digress. I am Tom the Whiskey Whisper, Whiskey Evangelist, prolific whiskey drinker, purveyor of wisdom, and all right, good guys, lot you.